welcome to another How to Train Your Dragon series vlog. This is for episode 7, and this is a milestone episode. We finally see Stoic get his own dragon. And this, and uh, if you haven't seen the series uh, before you saw the second movie, you might be a little confused because in the second movie we see Stoic riding a dragon which I forget what the species is called, and he calls it Skull Crusher. But in this one, he he doesn't have he doesn't have that dragon. He has a thunder drum, and uh, really, that's that's the only thing that confuses me. Really, this still was a good episode, but I'm kind of wondering what happened in between the series and the movie that made Stoic switch from the thunder drum to Skull Crusher. But anyway, that's kind of off to off topic. This was uh another this was a good episode, not really the best, but just the whole the whole premise of the episode kind of kind of makes it enjoyable. Uh It starts off with one of the sh one of the Viking ships coming back into port kind of all damaged and it's because there's this rogue dragon and Stoic is still wants to do things like the Viking way. Tradition. Yes, tr yes. That means you know all hands, hands and foot thing. No dragons. So Hiccup tries to tell him that he should get a dragon. It'll make things easier, and he's not having on it. But Gobber, for some reason, convinces him. Yeah, it takes Gobber to convince him. Mm -hmm. Gobber of all things. Mm hmm. And this is kind of what sets off this little subplot with uh, Hiccup feeling like his dad is not listening to him, even though he's kind that Hiccup is kind of the expert on dragons. And but really, I didn't really. I don't. I'm not nitpicking so much about it because just the whole way that Hiccup and Stoic interact with throughout the episode is almost like it's like a parent trying to. Trying to teach a kid how to drive a car. Only it's like the roles re is reversed. It's Hiccup who's trying to teach his dad how to bond with a dragon. And he's like, come on, can we fly? Can we fly? Can we fly? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stone is pretty much a kid again. <laughs> like, just try to picture... St I wonder what he looks like as a kid. Did he still have that beard? Probably. <laughs> yes, he was born with the beard. Yeah. And it doesn't even help is that... All right. It took it took some while to convincing because it kind of a rough start. Uh, Stoic, like, doesn't know how to work work Toothless's tail and ends up crashing everything. That's kind of what gives us some good some good comedic moments. You know, after the fact that the dragon is crashing into rocks, he says, "That was the dragon crash." You gonna blame that on the <laughs> dragon too? too? Yes. yes. <laughs> that was right. gold. But. Hiccup eventually does convince him that riding a dragon is the best, and <laughs> and again he still acts like a little kid. I mean he scares. I mean he Hiccup has toothless scare boars away from the garden, using a plasma bolt. And, and a nerve bolt. Shoot again, Dad. The boars are gone. I just like the fireworks. <laughs> oh my god. Right. So now Stoic knows that knows that having a dragon will be handy. The only problem is, he thinks Toothless is the best, so now he just constantly monopolizes Toothless's time from Hiccup, and, and he's so, mention, Toothless is just so miserable. Not to mention, he runs him ragged. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like a workforce labor <laughs> laws are being violated here. If there were for dragons. If, yes, if there were for dragons, like, I wonder how, how much a break he even got. And... And so, uh, so Hiccup says that okay, why don't we find try to find you another dragon? And again, keeping in with the whole, car, the whole kid looking for a car kind of kind of thing. The every every one of the of the writers show off their dragons uh, to Stoic. I don't know why, because then they're not going to see their dragons either. Yeah, though to be fair. Like going backwards slightly, uh, that 
the, my favorite quote from this episode was the honey hatching. <laughs> so, my God. You know, there are so many shows, so many movies of medium where you try to do, give them something sweet before saying something to, you know, I want you all on my team, not doing this, blah, 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 blah. You know, and they'll end up like hurt or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, no, not stoic. He sees through this bullshit. <laughs> He's like, okay, you're giving me the honey. Now, what's the de- bad news? <laughs> okay. And it's just so... F- oh, yeah, I won't give you... I'll give you that. That was actually very funny. It's, oh, it is funny when characters kind of know that they're, <laughs> that, uh, they're being BS'd. Yes. I was, I was like, oh, my God. That is just gold. And probably, probably because it, and probably because it was so obvious Hiccup was doing that because he even he didn't know what the heck, he, yeah, uh, heck, uh, Astrid was talking about. She was the one who convinced him to do that. So I kind of think that maybe because Stoic is the chief, he's probably had to do that method a whole lot. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but no, going back to you're picking your own dragon lot. No, the dragon lot. Seriously, and Snotloud being his usual annoying self, actually, oh. actually, t- actually was kind of entertaining for for a bit because he was sell he was selling his dragon like it was a car, even going so far as saying, "Put should I put you down for one? They come in assortment of colors." Yeah, he he would make a great dragon salesman <laughs> if they were a car. <laughs> okay, but. The be- but the best one has to be fish legs and his dragon. <laughs> God, fish legs. <laughs> well, how do you so- kid that? It's just, I can't take that serious. <laughs> okay, fish legs is like a doting mother when it comes to his dragon, and they even they even Stoic says that it says sorry son, but I'm looking for a dragon, not a mother. And it kind of makes me wonder why, how was he not made fun of as much as Hiccup was in, in the first movie? I know. Was it because he was just big and fluffy looking? And I yeah. say fluffy, you know, like, like I'm not fat, I'm fluffy. Yeah. You know, the levels yeah. of fatness. Yes, fish legs is fluffy. Fish legs, yeah. yes, yes. Just a, it's just one level short of damn. <laughs> <laughs> All right, but eventual, so. None of the dragons work out for obvious reasons. One, Hook, Fang, Hook Fang burns his ass. <laughs> uh, Stoic is not gentle to towards deadly natters. Uh, the twins on their zipple back. Not yeah, said. Not said. And and fish legs just doting on on meat lug. Plus, I don't think he would fit. If you try to sit on the meat lug, I think no. I think Stoic. My Zoix is about the same size as a Gronkle. So, not much maneuvering there. Yeah, you, so, won't, you won't be able to get much done. Yeah. Alright, so none of the dragons are up to uh, Stoic standards, and that is that they have to be, like, toothless. But then, well, trouble happens again, and it turns out the rogue dragon is is uh, attacking another fishing boat with a uh, molten bucket! Bucket! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Of course, we don't see much. We don't see much of them, but they're always, but he, they're always a joy to see. Uh, oh no, no, no! It's like he's like, "Are you two okay? Let's get this to shore." Tail whips out, grabs stoic, pulls we, him in the water. We, Before we, what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, oh my God, bucket! You, you, your chief just went down. That's all you're gonna say? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! All right. So. The dragon that's attacking is uh, an underwater dragon, another species that has been referenced in the first movie. This is a thunder drum. This is the one that can produce a loud concussive blast that can, well, blow a Viking's head off. <laughs> well, yes. th- but because this is a kid's show, it just gives them a bad headache. Yeah, it just gives them some sound waves. <laughs> and so, it's and not, Stoic no. is just so ha- what? Uh, I was gonna say not. No, every time I saw that little sound wave, I'm picturing Inception. Ball. <laughs> well, he's got a bi- well. He's got a big enough mouth. His mouth is like can open wider than his whole body. <laughs> yeah. Just, just trying to picture. I like 
boom. I'm like, <laughs> my God. All right, so, and Stoic is just so happy because he's getting into this fight with a dragon because, well, he's a Viking, really. Bonding, as we call it. <laughs> yes, by bonding, but, you mean beating the living shit out of it. Yes. And so they get it back, they muzzle, they get it back to the academy, they muzzle it, and Hiccup still trying to convince his dad to, uh, it, and it's still like talking to a brick wall, and <laughs> <laughs> they just keep getting into, they keep getting, Stoic and the Thunder Drum keep getting into fights, and eventually they, fl they fly out and they have to go search for it. And this is actually this is, this is finally where it where where it gets good. And I don't know that now. When I say good, I mean just generic because oh, the whole episode is good. I mean this is when it all comes together. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, this is where it's like, you know, you find out why there's dragons attacking boats. You find out why it's doing what it's doing. And I was like, whoa, shit, the friend's injured. Is yeah, it like a female it's a, dragon though? I I think it might be a female That's dragon, but we, well, it's never really referenced. So yes, the reason why the thunder drum has been attacking the fishing boats is because it's trying to take care of its injured friend. There's like, it has a hole in its wing. Yeah. I'm like, I mean, I don't know. I. I'm pretty sure that's kind of painful, really. Uh, mm. Is that even repairable? I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Like, Maybe look like at with a its tail. Oh, that was like a whole. That was like a whole tail. That wasn't like a, like a, a skin. That wasn't a skin thing. Like mm, true. But this was. I'm kind of thinking maybe like sewing, like sewing leather flaps over it. I don't. I but, know, maybe or maybe. But no, maybe uh, the wing is made of skin. It could probably heal. Yeah, but no. The best part is Stoic telling his son go get some help. He stays behind to help, and then. For the love of God, what of all things shall attack our defenseless dragon? Demonic Pumbas! Exactly! <laughs> Warthogs with red eyes of glowing Going. doom. Now, the thing is, there is a possibility to that happen. From what, what I heard about is that if pigs do taste blood, they will require an insatiable bloodlust. They will go crazy. So, so I they, don't know. I don't know if that is true. So they developed a taste for dragon blood, any kind of blood. Okay, I guess. And so, and so, Stoic is like, what is like swinging away on these boars, and with the help of the fun, thunder drum, and they kind, and there's still more coming, and this is what it was all leading up to, Stoic. Bonding. Uh, finally bonding with the dragon. Fi a, a genuine bond. Not like saying, I'm your chief, listen to me. Yes, no, and you know he just got real when he just ripped off the muzzle with his bare hands. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he could have done that anyway. Yeah, but still, it, he did it one-armed. <laughs> Not two, one. <laughs> and, and he made it look like he was just like, you know those scenes where cool guys don't look at explosions? He just did that, he's just like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so yeah, now there's a, so Stoic and the Thunder Drum had developed a genuine bond. It was very, it was really great, and it turns out Stoic really was listening to Hiccup throughout the whole time. And it was, I don't know, it it kind of I don't really know how to go in depth at all because it just ends and it ends like that, and I'm kind of happy about it. Uh, one thing I'm happy about, there's no sight of Mildred. <laughs> I'm so happy not to hear him again. <laughs> for, well, until the next time. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Don't, don't worry. Uh, but, so yeah. Uh, How to Pick Your Dragon was a good episode. Better than some of the passable episodes that I've given. Probably, it, it was a good episode. Not the best. But I mean, it had the, enjoyable. It had a slight generic storyline, but honestly, it's, I think they made that generic a little bit more funny. They're like, as you mentioned, we turned a dad into a kid, mm -hmm. so it became sort of like an inverse of itself. Yes, and 
It was, yeah, it was, and that's kind of what I like. It's, it's hilarious. It's not. It's trying to be serious, but it's not taking itself too seriously. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad to see some con- continuity c- continuation with Godward being the dentist. Yeah. You know, it's not like it's a one episode thing where okay, you're a dentist and. Nope, not brought up again. Hey, <laughs> he's still being a dentist. Mm-hmm. So I get props for that. And then I was like, you know, there's some shows where, okay, I'll make a very big one. This is a live action one. MASH, where they screw up the characters' ages, their <laughs> daughters, how old their daughters were, and well, all that wonderful stuff. Well, that was back in, well, that was back in like the 50s and 60s. Now that... Since the '90s and and all the way to now, we do kind of take issue with continuity. Right? We're a lot smarter than that. Yeah. Doesn't some of them? Not some all of them. There's still that, some. Though. Some. Not, yeah, and some shows do have some inconsistent, some inconsistency, errors like uh, like in Scrubs. Like how many times? Like yeah. there have been numerous times when, when Ted, you know the the bald sad, the sad bald lawyer. Had said that before he started working, he had hair, but and they I remember like that being twice mentioned twice in the entire show, and then one episode he says I lost my hair in the fifth grade. It's like continuity error right there. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm glad to see that they're taking continuity seriously, though mm-hmm. that has yet to be said about the dragon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully, either in the second season. Or in the upcoming Netflix uh, seasons, there will be an explanation as to why Stoic doesn't use the Thunder Drum anymore. In fact, how he even got Skull Crusher. Yeah, yeah. though I, I'm hoping it's not going to be too sad. Yeah, not too sad. No, oh, it might I, I, I hope it, it's going to be like you know that one Pokemon episode where Ash said it's Butterfree Fruit. <laughs> I admit it, you, when you, as a kid, you cried at that episode. I, yes, I did. I, I was like, oh my god. Although, you remember the scene in How to Train Your Dragon 2 when, when we see Hiccup first flying with Toothless and that awesome song is playing? Yes. He's swimming above a school of thunder drums. Those were thunder drums. I think maybe that was kind of a reference. That might have been, that might have <laughs> oh been something planned in advance. Oh my god. That might have been... It might have been something that was planned in advance. I am not sure. No, that, that could have been a chieftain of the Thunder Drums. Or, hmm, maybe. No, he's like the pack of the herd. The leader of the pack. That Thunder Drum? Yeah. Maybe. Wow. And I was just bullshitting about that. <laughs> I wasn't actually being serious. Huh. Well, we don't know. We'll see. Hopefully there will be an explanation. Yes. All right. All right, so... And so that... Concludes uh, this this episode's vlog. Uh, we'll see you next time. Hey.